Let me take you back a few years. It was just eight o'clock in the morning. I'm already exhausted. I was on call last night with a beeper. Remember one of those? I slept maybe for three hours while having a fever of 101 degrees. My body felt weak and my hands were cramping. Those wouldn't have been so bad, except my hands were inside a patient's chest for his open heart surgery. I didn't have a break for five hours. One of the nurses took pity on me and kept passing Dayquil's and cough drop under my mask to keep me going. When I woke up the next day, I was covered with sweat and hardly can move. I had to call in sick. My manager responded, just don't make a habit out of this. I was so frustrated and felt so unappreciated. We value our patient with empathy and respect, but in healthcare industry, we rarely treat our teammates and ourselves with the same value. We put ourselves last. In the early days, you can be two ways. It could be Erin, where she just hit a wall really quickly. Is this really what I wanted to do for the next 20, 30 resume life? And versus me was the one who's like, let's keep going. Let's, let's get, build my resume up and let's do everything. And then you hit a wall really quickly too, because when you don't give yourself a break, you don't know how to put a brake on when you're driving high speed down the road, you're bound to hit something, right? Oh yeah, you literally burn out your engine. It blows exactly. up and starts smoking. Exactly, it's like you don't even put gas in your tank and you think you can go from across the state. Hi. I am Sabrina Rombach, a cardiothoracic surgery PA and a public health practitioner. My story is now unique. In fact, this scenario sounds sadly familiar to many healthcare professionals in your audience. They're ambitious, talented, devoted to their patients and their organization, but it all come at a cost to them. They rarely can make home on time for dinner, missing out holidays, events, vacations due to extra shifts or late patient arrivals, those add-on cases. Between sleep, eat, work, they're not able to do anything they used to enjoy like their hobbies, workout, or even just have a moment to themselves sitting on the couch. Self-care is not luxury, it's actually necessity because when we are able to boost our self-care, that means we're maintaining a healthy relationship with ourselves and others. That will boost your confidence and self-esteem as well. We often say, uh, treat others like we always treat ourselves. In, in the sense of, if you are the one who always have all these great knowledge and you're just giving advices, but you're not practicing these things yourself, then you become incongruent. Mm -hmm. And when you become incongruent, then life starts misaligned. And we continue to go on different paths in life, but not actually understanding where we are going. This is not a sustainable way to live. When I was working 80 plus hours regularly and had a, to take call almost every night, I had to admit something needed to change. I stepped back and did extensive research and spend thousands of dollars and hours to come up with a system that coached myself out of that constant exhaustion and actually put myself first at once. I now could see that will give the best of me, not what's left of me. The crucial thing is we have to play and everyone has a different way of adapting every uh, preferences. So we all have multiple methods to help with the one goal, but what does that mean to fit into you? I have a slew of method with my two minute exercise to bring your focus back right away. And so you can feel more energized to be able to do the things that's coming up, right? And it's the same concept now, if we don't have any of those tools, we just keep going. And that's when we start pushing ourselves to the limit and don't even know how to put a break until your body couldn't handle anymore. It's forcing you to put a break on it. So 
when we can be in more control in creating harmony, that's when we can go into that optimum state to give the best of you, not what's left of you. Are you allowing yourself to continue to bombard with negative thoughts, what in psychology we call mental chatters? Or you are able to take better control to allow positive intelligence, positive moments to deposit in your mind. Because our mind is like a mind factory and you have two formats. One is Mrs. Triumph, another is Mrs. Defeat. Both are super obedient. Whenever you need them, they come right to work. I know one of the most common questions people ask me is, Sabrina, how could you create a work-life balance? Now I have to um, disappoint you a little bit to say there's not really such thing as life and work balance. You can have harmony cycles. If you're lonely seeking for balance, think about putting things equally on the balance beam. It's really difficult. But because life has so many different components, you can actually tap into each of them and give high quality of intention and not thinking about quantity. The formulary is motivation equals small steps plus energy. So you can be both powerful and passionate or you can overcome any mental blocks keeping you from success. You can be both powerful and passionate where you're no longer being distracted by maintaining busy work and focus only on the things that truly matter. You can be both powerful and passionate where you feel energized from the moment that you wake up to the time that you go to bed, truly get to the things that you enjoy and love and not just your obligations. And so joining together, we can be passionate and powerful in life.